Welcome everyone. I'm Ronnie from Ronnie's Garage in Southern California. Uh, we're holding our monthly tech meet. What we're going to talk about today is something that I don't usually talk about too much, and that's going to be an Arnage. Rolls Royce and Bentley went through some changes and transitions. These particular models came out in 1998. And just to back up, I don't know who asked how often you're supposed to change that thermostat, but if you email me, I will, I will get back to you and let you know what the super factory says. So we've got this oil. I'm sure this is kind of what he's worried about. And you can see, if you come over here and look at this frame member, you can see that it may not be leaking there. It, you've got some kind of residue coming down over there. But if you go a little further forward, you see, look at this. There's oil there. It's dripping on there. There's, there's residue on the exhaust. See how it's kind of burned on there? So something's leaking above. And I see a hydraulic hose there that if you look at it, it's, it's, I'm, I'm, I'm sure that that is a leak there because it looks, that's a sleeve on there, but that's wet. Now, if I try to look above it, which these cars are really hard to see anything, glasses if I look above it there's the tandem pump but it appears dry see all those pipes it's really hard to work on these cars you can see how difficult it can be to even tell you where a leak is coming from because it's everything is so buried we got a leak coming off the front of the engine here too okay so if you can see right here there's a lot of Stuff dripping down. You can see on the exhaust right there. See where it's running down. So I, I see this hydraulic hose. That is very suspect to me because it's wet. Okay. I see the front of the engine right here leaking onto this cross pipe. That's there's a the front of the engines on these like the leak. You got a main seal and then you've got that split front cover. Um, so I would say the front engine cover's leaking on this. We've got that hydraulic hose, which can be difficult to even figure out which hose it is. But nice thing is we don't see any leaks back here. Right? There's some seepage there, but I think that's going to be coming from the valve cover on this side. You can see the valve cover under here. So this is, if, it, if the valve cover is, the gasket's right, that black line right there. This is your rocker cover right up above it. This is a cylinder head. There's a gasket in there. You can see, you see that's, that's not what I would call a leak. That's some minor seepage. Uh, that's nothing that'll ever hit the ground, essentially. For me, leaks are what hit the ground most of the time. If it's seeping, then that's something else. Struts, like the leak on these sometimes back here. These have been where these, these have hydraulic fluid on them, so you always look around there. Back ends are pretty dry on these cars most of the time. This is one of your ABS sensor wires here. This goes to this wheel. You see it's, these will fail with time. The shielding's falling off of this, see that? Okay. It's real common on these cars when they get older, especially on the front wheels. The sensor wires, you think about the front wheels, the rear wheels only go up and down. The front wheels go up and down and they turn. So any kind of wire that you bend and flop around too much will tend to fail. Plus, they've got sheathing on them that's made from rubber, natural materials, and over time, the ozone or whatever, all the gases in our atmosphere will deteriorate rubber just like it deteriorates this, these pads back here. This one, oops, well, that one might be still there, but this side, remember this side? How it's all kind of falling apart. What happened, a symptom for when these things fail is going over bumps, you get this bed spring, old rusty bed spring sound, er, e, er, e, er, e. same with the front, the ball joints and, and upper control arms or that upper bushings will go bad. 
without the verses leaving, no trips on the ground without that being rough, idle, or start? Not likely. The only way that a leaking valve cover in my mind would cause a rough start or a rough idle is if it's leaking bad enough that it's dripping onto the spark plug wire and shorting that out. Um, when, when does the misfire happen? Is he responding, Jeremy? Uh, yeah, he said, when I start. When you start the engine cold? Yes. Okay, so, do you ever see any white smoke out of the exhaust? No. Okay, that's a good thing. So, uh, it's, I've seen a number of these cars will have a rough roughness when it starts and then it smooths out. Uh, sometimes they'll have a surging idle. Um, and if there are no warning signs, in other words, light or anything like that, which you can access with a scanner, just so you know, the check engine light will come on and stay on when there is a serious hard fault. That's what they call it, a hard fault, which is very consistent. That will affect emissions. So that'll come on. If there is a fault to where you can cause potential damage to the catalytic converters, in other words, a misfire that's all the time and you're driving it, typically that engine, the check engine light will flash at you. It's just trying to get your attention, okay? Because... If you don't address it, you're going to cause a lot of serious damage and a lot of expense. You said it's a 96 spur. Oh, it's not even one of these. Okay. So a 96 spur, rough idle at start. Um, it could be a vacuum hose issue. A 96 has got the Zytec engine. Do you smell fuel when you do, that happens? Do you smell raw fuel? A uh, common problem on those are the fuel lines going to the fuel injectors underneath the intake manifold. Uh, if the car sits a lot of times and let's say it sits for a couple weeks, what happens is if, if it's leaking fuel, that fuel's all gonna go away. You will start the car, the hose is old and crispy, and it will leak gas until it gets swollen again from the moisture, and then not leak gas again. That's common. He said no lights on dash. All right. 96 has got a minimal, it doesn't have a very good uh, monitoring system. Could be a spark plug. Real common. Uh, those, those cars are not super efficient. So I would, I would start with pulling the spark plugs, looking at those. I just had a, a what was it, a 90, 92, I think, spur come in this week who failed smog because it's hydrocarbons. HC was too high. Um, hydrocarbons are the gas that is made by a misfire. And well, I started the car and it, it, it had a miss. It wasn't running on all eight. And he, he never complained about that. It's pretty funny. So what I did is I put it on my scope. I saw that one of the Firing lines on the scope was real low, which means it's shorted. It was typically a foul plug, bad plug wire. And I pulled all the plugs, and one of the plugs was kind of caked up black. It wasn't firing. The rest of the plugs were tan. Tan is a good color. Sometimes they'll even go to white. That's a really clean uh, engine. So I took my sandblaster and sandblasted that spark plug, and then he called back later and said, uh, thanks for changing my Rolls Royce into a Maserati. And he said it passed with flying colors. So yeah. that's, that always surprises me when somebody drives a car thinking it's normal and, it, and it's, it's missing bad. Or I've even seen it with, especially with the silver clouds where the brakes don't work. And they said, well, well that's, that's, I was told that that's normal. 